Hey folks, welcome to today's episode of Roll of Law. Now, I've been streaming on the Lawyers and Dragons, uh, sort of doing some live D&D, and a lot of people have been asking me, how do I get into playing Dungeons and Dragons or some other role-playing game? Because there's lots of options. If you don't like the theme of one, there's probably one that does appeal to you. Now, this is a bit of a tough problem for some people because Dungeons & Dragons is fundamentally a social activity. It's an activity you play with other people who, of course, also want to play the same game, and it requires a bit of time and so forth. So this can be a, a difficult thing if you've never done this before to find a group and to get started. So there's a number of sort of ways you can go about doing this. One is if you've got some friends who are also interested and none of you have played before, there's nothing saying you can't just all learn together, that you can't all figure things out. And this is actually how I got my start in playing way back when. Uh, a friend and I, we used to play sort of imagination games and talk about this, and eventually we kind of realized that these role-playing games existed. Other people had had this same idea, and so we picked up the books and we just started learning how to do it. And there's nothing wrong with that. You do have to realize that there may be some expenditures. You might be able to get those books from your library, but only for a limited period. You're going to need to buy dice. You're going to need to do all these things. And it can be a little challenging to figure things out when you are just sort of diving in like that. The good thing, of course, is that if everyone at the table is on the same footing, then nobody can really complain about this. Now, there are some disadvantages. As mentioned, cost can be one of them. Uh, another can be just if nobody really knows sort of the, the, the fundamentals, you can fall into traps that other people may have already sort of found in terms of uh, group dynamics and this kind of thing. So you might want to go on Reddit and check out, you know, the D&D &D or D&D &D Next or various other subreddits just to see see what there is to learn and watch channels like this one that talk about uh, talk about the dynamics, talk about playing the game, but ultimately do what feels like fun, right? That's the whole point of this is to have fun and to enjoy yourself. So that's a perfectly viable option. However, you can also go and look for an established group and then join, join that. And that might be an in-person group and you can find those possibly on places like Reddit, uh, there's the Reddit subreddit of looking for group, LFG. That's one good place. Uh, you might also check out your local game store and talk to them because they might have groups that are already there that might be looking for players. I would recommend that you be open and honest about being a new player. And there might be groups out there who say, you know what, we don't want you as a new player. But I will tell you, you don't want those groups either as a new player. If they don't want you because you're new, you don't want them either. So anybody that is selecting you out because you say you're a new player is really kind of doing you a favor. They're saying, hey, um, we're not going to be good for you. And quite frankly, as an experienced player, I'm not usually super a fan of those groups either. So a group that is saying we don't want a new player is can be something of a, a flag in that sense. Again, you may want to get a hold of the books. And to start out with, you can probably borrow books uh, from an existing group if it's a an in-person group. But I really recommend checking your local library because they probably have these books. You can probably borrow them from a period and then have a look and see, is this something you want to, you know, to dedicate yourself to in a, a, and actually spend that money? Uh, usually for Dungeons and Dragons, to start out, the book you'd want is just the player's handbook. And you can build from there if you, you know, as you grow into things. There's no need to sort of dive in and buy everything right away. Um, you may also want to buy, you know, just some dice and, you know, bring some pencils for, for writing stuff down on your character sheet and so forth. So... Now, um, I actually quite like Reddit for this reason, and one of the things I like about using Reddit for this is that when you're looking at joining a group, you can actually check the person's post history and do a little bit of research on them, because that way you can have an idea of this, is this somebody you're going to enjoy spending several hours with, you know, maybe every week or every other week, and this can be kind of a personal experience. You can sort of expose and be vulnerable, you know, in in certain ways. And so is this somebody that you'd feel comfortable doing that with? 
is this, you know, and keep in mind that, you know, if there's one person organizing a group, they will tend to pick people who are kind of like them as well. They'll tend to sort of gather that kind of group. And so you can ask yourself, is this something I'm going to enjoy? You should also spend some time thinking, just introspecting a little bit. I mentioned that there is a certain amount of vulnerability that can come up with playing Dungeons & Dragons, because as much as it's make-believe, you're also going to be bringing parts of yourself to the table. And so you should also think a little bit about if there's things that you just uh, can't do at a table. You know, if you have a persistent fear of spiders, you know, is that something that would bother you if that's brought up? This is worth thinking about and worth mentioning as well to, you know, a prospective group. And most groups will be pretty cool about dealing with that. And now, of course, nobody has any obligation to, you know, to accept you if they're planning on doing an entire campaign focused around battling the undead and you just can't deal with the idea of, you know, zombies, then this probably isn't the group for you. But it is still, again, you know, this is kind of a situation where you're still being done a favor, even if somebody says that won't work for us. Uh, but keep in mind, you know, what you're, what you don't want to find is a group that's going to disrespect that. You know, somebody who says, hey, we won't take you, you know, we, that won't fit with our campaign is one thing. Somebody who just kind of scoffs at, you know, at what your needs is probably not somebody you want to, to play with. I will give a warning here because uh, there's sort of an old adage in the, you know, in the D&D community, which says no D&D is better than bad D&D because bad experiences can be really bad in this and can be really off-putting. And an unfortunate aspect of things is that sometimes bad groups are the easiest to find a spot in because nobody else wants to be there, so they're always recruiting. So there is a bit of a a bit of a problem with that. And a lot of people unfortunately find that their first experience is disappointing or unpleasant. Uh, there's nothing that says you have to stay with a group. If you are not enjoying yourself leave and maybe try another group or you might find that it's not for you that's also okay but ideally you're going to want to find a group that's willing to sort of help you along willing to you know bring you up to speed because there's a lot to learn and is going to be sort of respectful of of your situation there so all of that is things to keep in mind as you know as much as you're probably looking for a group, you also need to be kind of interviewing the other side to see, you know, is this a group of people who I want to, uh, who I want to spend time with, who I want to have these experiences with. Now, having said all of that, you know, the next steps are going to be things like making a character and deciding what you want to play. And that's a lengthy topic. I'll probably do a whole video on sort of good um, ideas for characters and so forth that are really kind of new player friendly because some some things are harder to dive right into than others but what i would suggest is coming and you know to the to the game with an attitude of make a character who wants to be there and who wants to go on adventures make a character who wants to relate to the other party members and this will never go wrong for you if you are making a, a character who is, you know, who who basically wants to lean into whatever adventure is happening because it's really easy to make yourself a character who's kind of a brooding antisocial loner who doesn't want to do anything. And that's sort of a popular concept in, you know, movies and TV shows and so forth. It doesn't work very well in the Dungeons and Dragons setting because you're you know, there's not one main character. It's not that there's one person and the story revolves around them. It's a bunch of different people. And so ultimately, if you say, I, you know, I don't want to do this in a movie, things will happen to drag you into the action. In a D&D game, the action might just happen without you. So I really recommend, you know, there's lots of ways to do this, but have a character concept that is that really wants to go and do do things and have these adventures. And I think that is a, a 
better way to have a good first experience and a good early on sort of experience with the game. Uh, also, I will tell you, just as somebody who's run games, um, as a dungeon master, when somebody, you know, when I throw out a possible adventure, the the player whose character is always saying, yes, let's go do that, is probably my favorite person at the table. You know, this just makes things a lot easier. Um, it is, it really makes things uh, smooth and easy. So I really uh, recommend doing that. Uh, I also recommend sort of in terms of your initial character another thing to keep in mind and again i'm probably going to do a, a video just on first characters but uh, i really also recommend that you kind of plan your character out in terms of think of what all of your backstory as kind of the beginning of the beginning you know the stuff to set you up and what I mean by that is if you watch superhero movies, the superhero movies love to do the how the character got started as a superhero and how they got all their powers. And so they actually start the thing off when the person is, you know, kind of learning, you know, before Spider-Man gets bit by the radioactive spider or, you know, Tony Stark before he builds the suit. All of these are great places to start. You know, Tony Stark has these, you know, skills and experience and so forth. But his story at the beginning of things is not, you know, that he's been fighting all these bad guys and so forth. He's not the uh, the hero of the world at this point. He's just a guy who's ready to start a story. And the reason why I mention that is that if your character concept is somebody who's, you know, fought armies and all of this... Your first adventure is going to be a bit of a letdown. You want to be growing up into bigger and better things. And keep in mind, in most campaigns, you're going to start at a low level. So you're going to start out in the adventure by fighting things like wolves and orcs and not armies of demons and that kind of thing. So that allows you to grow and build. And typically you will be a lot more satisfied with the path of your character and the development of your character if you take that kind of approach. So those are some of my recommendations. Uh, again, it's it's probably easiest if you find an existing group to join rather than if you want to start one yourself. But uh, you do want to keep some things in mind on that and keep trying. Um, I recommend there is a lot out there to read. There's a lot of you know channels out there with some good experience. It is worth you know looking into and digging into this, but don't be afraid of this is the other thing. It, um, and don't be afraid kind of to embarrass yourself. You know, I'm playing Gimlet Otter Fiegel in this, and I will tell you, sometimes I'm sitting there going, I am making a stupid voice, and my character is saying some stupid things, and I'm on a stream being watched by a thousand people. But you kind of need to push through that and push through that embarrassment. I, I know that it may not seem like it, but I'm a fairly shy person i'm a fairly uh and i've really had to push through that now this has been fantastic you know doing sort of live commentary playing D D, and so forth has been really helpful for that but you will always have more fun if you're just willing to kind of put yourself out there and be willing to uh to kind of eat the embarrassment I can guarantee you that everyone else at the table is kind of thinking about how they look. And typically when you are having a big showy moment and you might feel a little silly, those also tend to be the moments that everyone else really likes and everyone else really appreciates. So anyway, um, those are some thoughts. As I mentioned, I will probably do a video on just D and D character concepts that are good as a starting player that will give you enough stuff to do that you're not going to be bored, but also aren't going to bury you in complexity and, and make things difficult in that sense. So let me know if that's something you would like to see. I'm also going to probably do some more commentary on different spells I I really like and might think are uh, the sort of under uh, underappreciated, including by people who make these kind of videos. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions, if there's anything you think you'd like to see me cover. But um, I was getting this question quite a bit, so I thought I'd uh, address it. 
Anyway, thank you for watching. See you guys next time.